you since the last time you were with us about this case? And have you seen any media coverage since the last time you were with us about this case? No. Okay. Mr. Anderson, your next witness, please. Let us call John Kowalski. If you saw me swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. State your name for the record, please. Jack Kowalski. Mr. Kowalski, were you here this past Thursday when the deposition of Kathy Beatty was played concerning certain alleged conversations? I was. Can you tell the jury whether you ever gave Kathy Beatty permission in any way to touch your child? Absolutely not. Undress your child? No. Photograph your child? No. Put Maya on her lap? No. Hug your child? No. Kiss your child? No. Say anything to your child in any way having to do with sex? No. Objection. Or vilate? Objection. Move to strike her. No. Other than the transfer form in evidence to Nemours for Munchausen by proxy as the reason, did Johns Hopkins ever present you with any other attempts to transfer Maya out of there? I didn't understand it. Could you repeat that? Was the Nemours transfer form the only one you saw? I had never seen a transfer form. From Nemours? Uh, I did not. At you did not time. see it? No. And did you ever have any discussions with Kathy Beatty having anything to do with her, quote, Providing Maya comfort? No. Right. And at any point, Mr. Kowalski, was it ever brought to your attention that there was an ongoing plan to separate you and Mrs. Kowalski and Kyle Kowalski from Maya Kowalski through adoption or foster care? Object, objection, uh, mischaracterization, foundation issue. I'm going to assume that you need to rephrase. Sure. What, if anything, did Johns Hopkins, anyone there, ever tell you about in early November of 2016 a plan or goal of transferring Maya into foster care? I was not aware of that. So, if we could, in evidence, 1001-3795. Uh, and Mr. Kowalski, will you note the date there under the psychological prog progress note? What is the date? It's, uh, it's in the middle of the page. Oh, in the middle, I'm sorry. 11-2 uh, of 2016. So how long then after your admission, or Maya's admission, on October 7th of 2016 was this memo? How many weeks? No, that's almost a month. Right. Pretty close to it. Can we see the next page? 3796. We can enlarge. Uh, there at the top, if you'd please review what has been marked into evidence. Now, did Dr. Katzenstein or anyone at Johns Hopkins inform you that within a month there was a plan? to transfer your daughter into, quote, therapeutic foster care setting? Ob objection, mischaracterization, foundation. Sustained. Were you ever made aware of what is uh, stated in the interval history here? Same objection. Overall. No, I was not. When various things 
looks like it. Did you make notes on or during the time of Maya's stay there, which, in which you documented some of the things happening? I did. Do you remember every single one of them, or specifically? Uh, there's quite a bit of things, so it'd be kind of hard to... Would it, refresh your would it refresh your recollection to see a note from that time? That'd be great. Your Honor, for the record, this is 2380. We're going to refresh his recollection, and we're going to only show it to him and yeah. not the, right. not the uh, jury. Okay, now it can be put up. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, for the record, this is 2380-013. May I approach? Or do you already have a copy of this? I do not have it with you. Can I borrow your copy? Please get down for a second. Is this an evidence? No, Your Honor, this is simply to refresh. This is marked for ID. Mr. Reyes, uh, for whatever, I guess, how you two have split this up, I just saw it up on the gallery TV, and I, I have turned that off. So I'm going to need you to switch over to your table left and then run it that way. I'm sorry, we'll have to reset it. I can't have it go up to the gallery monitor. May I please record? Right, but it's going to take Mr. Ray as a moment to change out some cables. All right, we're going to step aside for a quick break. Don't go anywhere, friends. We're just getting started here in the Take Care of Maya civil case. After Dad, Maya herself is going to be the next witness up. You'll see it all right here on Court TV Live. This is Eric Murdoch, my wife and daughter, Scott On the premiere episode of an all-new Court TV true crime series. This case was unlike a normal murder case. Suspicious that they're dead. No father can do that to the son. No Murdoch could do it to a Murdoch. He has a long history of deception. Once I told a lie, the roads all came back to hell. I had to keep learning. Victim to Verdict with Ted Rollins premieres Sunday night, 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. 13. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. We're watching the Take Care of Maya civil trial happening in Florida in uh, Sarasota County. Right now, Jack Kowalski is back on the witness stand. Uh, his attorneys have recalled him to clear up some things. Then when he's done, we're going to hear from Maya herself. Uh, so perhaps the most anticipated day of this case and the most critical day. Let's go back in where we left off. Kowalski, will you please review 2380-013? Yes. Does that refresh your recollection as to what notes you made and what you were told at the time about Maya Kowalski's treatment? Yes, sir. Oh, and what you observed? Yes. Maya Kowalski's treatment? <clears throat> What is the first point there that was of concern regarding Ms. Beatty's? I, I just took it down. If it's being used to refresh his recollection. I understand. So I just took it down. I understand, Your Honor. Okay. You what, if anything, did Ms. Beatty tell Maya about Beata, your wife, and mental treatment? Objection, Your Honor. Meeting. I remember one time I came in there and Maya asked me, she uh, asked if mom was in a mental hospital and I asked her why would you come up with that? And she stated that the social worker, Kathy Beatty, told Maya that her mom's getting mental treatment. I was outraged. Was, it, was that true in any way, shape or form? No, no, it was not. And. What, if anything, did you learn as to 
Miss Beatty's involvement with Maya about comforting her? There was more than one time uh, she states that uh, Maya, when I say she, uh, Maya stated that Kathy Beatty would place Maya on her lap, stroke her hair. There was a time she said, I know I'm not your mother, but I can be. Uh, she kissed her on the cheek. Maya was not uh, acceptable of having that done. Uh, it was very disturbing to hear this. And What, if anything, did you learn about uh, Catherine, uh, Kathy Beatty's behavior during supervised phone calls? Um, Maya, uh, Maya would state, while speaking with her mom, that was a special time for both of them to get to talk to each other. Um, Kathy Beatty be supervising it. She would have her phone on, on the bed. Um, and while mom and Maya were talking about different things, Kathy Beatty be rolling her eyes or making fa facial expressions. You know, very, very destructive, you know, for Maya to pay attention to mom. Uh, what, if anything, what emotions or fears did Maya have concerning retaliation from Ms. Beatty in court proceedings or because of court proceedings? Jack's speculation overall. Maya stated she was extremely scared to mention a lot of things. She was worried that she would not be able to go to the courthouse or talk with the judge on the phone. Um, uh, so she was very worried to say certain things um, because Kat, she was worried about Kathy interfering with her, her chance to talk to the judge on the phone. What, if anything, did Ms. Beatty and or the nurses attending uh, your daughter tell her about her illness as to whether it was physical or psychological? Object uh, of speculation and compact. What, if anything, did she relate the nurses were telling her about her symptoms and her illness? Most of them said that it was all in Maya's head, and I'm sure she'll testify to that. Now, upon being told this, did you relate this to your wife? Yes, I did. And what, if anything, was her reaction? The same as mine. Which very, is? very upset. As you came home and told her about more and more of these things, describe for the jury how she was reacting. Well, like any mother would, to hear something like that going on and it's not true, she was outraged. Right. And there was nothing she could do about it. Now, at or about the time it occurred, January 6, 2017, did you make notes concerning the preparation, if you will, of Maya for her court appearing that day? Yes, I did. Do you remember everything about that, or would you need? I remember a lot of what I wrote down, um, yes. All right. Do you need refreshing, uh, your recollection refreshed, or can you just tell them? I'll, I'll try to go okay. from my memory. Go ahead. Tell them what you understood was done to your daughter immediately before going to the courthouse. Maya was finally coming to the courthouse for the first time. Uh, and, she, and was this important to her? To get extremely to important. She was looking forward to this day. Um, she was going to go to the courthouse and then also be evaluated by Dr. Duncan. And then I believe a uh, doctor's evaluation from Dr. Hannah after that. Uh, prior to leaving the hospital, the social worker, Kathy Beatty, stated that Maya needs to strip down and she has to take pictures of my daughter. Maya was not agreeable on that. She said, if you do not get the pictures, you are not going to court. Maya cried. Another nurse came in to assist the social worker. 
I took the pictures of Maya. All right, what are you thinking so far about this case, my friends? Let me bring in my guest, trial attorney and family law attorney, Jenny Brown is in the studio with me, and trial attorney Rich Schoenstein is joining us remotely. Wonderful to have you both on the show on this Monday morning. Uh, Jenny, let me go to you first. Your thoughts on this case, please. I think it's heartbreaking. I am a family law attorney, and we've had cases like this where there is no child abuse, but a child gets removed from a home, and it is devastating emotionally and financially so i think that this case could set a dangerous precedent but i think overall the case is heartbreaking yeah no it really is it's tragic all the way around uh, rich schoenstein your take please well i'm fascinated by this case because there's this inherent uh, sort of competition between parents and and the medical professionals in a situation like this where you have a sick child. And you can understand both perspectives. You can understand a hospital that's concerned with the treatment the child is getting and moving to take care of her, and you can, can, you can understand the parents pushing back. But this testimony that we're hearing right now, this is devastating for the hospital because this conduct by the social worker, if true, that is horrendous. And, you know, even if you say it's okay that they misdiagnosed the situation, that they went to court to get a shelter order, it seems with the social worker, what is being said she did is way out of bounds. Rich Schoenstein, Jenny Brown, stand by if you would kindly, please. More questions coming your way. We're going to hit a break. When we come back, we'll return to Florida. And remember, today is the day that we're going to see Maya Kowalski herself taking the stand. Florida father accused of locking his son in a box in the garage with a bed, a bucket, and a camera. He was locked in a room for hours at a time. Police say this abuse went unnoticed for years. There are ring videos that the state provided of the child lying. He faces up to 40 years. I'm not sure they're going to be able to justify it. What's going on in this house? The Boy in a Box Trial. Live coverage today on Court TV. To court we go now. We're watching the Take Care of Maya civil trial in play in Florida. And Jack Kowalski, the dad in this case, has retaken the stand. Let's go back in where we left off. Did they ever confront you and tell you that they thought your wife taking herself out of the picture in some form would be the best thing for Maya? Objection A, statement of remorse. Any doctor or nurse during this period of time at Johns Hopkins? Same objection. No, the only time uh, Kathy Beattie one time asked me if I ever considered divorcing my wife, it was just a weird situation, and I, I said no. And I said, why would you ask that? And she walked away. Were you aware that Ms. Bowes had another mother do the same thing, apparently commit suicide in this situation? Objection, foundation, Sustain. speculation. Sustain. What, if anything, did you learn during this time that Ms. Bose had knowledge of a prior incident? Same objection, Do you know? I didn't know at that time, no. Beata taking her own life, was this the right thing for Maya? It states there. There's no right thing. There's no. But the basis of this conversation was never conveyed to you? No. Good morning. 
Just to make sure I understand your testimony about the transfer, your testimony is that you never saw the transfer forms? I did not. So the rejection of transfer was made by your wife? The rejection of the transfer was made after we read the codes and found out it was not for CRPS, it was for conversion disorder or Mauchausen. The jury will see the codes again, but if I understand your testimony, even though the Morris Children's Hospital recommended this transfer was in the best interest of Maya, and even though all children's no, hospitals... The predicate, stating facts, and we get to the question. Sustained. Okay. Even though the transfer was recommended in the best yeah. interest of Maya... Cross-examination, yeah. Yeah, that's fine, but... Okay. Sustained. Okay. The rejection was made by Beata because she did not like the way it was framed about her, correct? With that code, yes, because that didn't happen, so she was not going to accept that code on there. Even she would admit guilt. She was not asked to sign a statement of guilt, Mr. Kowalski, was she? If you sign that form and that's on there, you're signing, you're agreeing with that diagnosis, with that code on there. So no, she would not agree on that. Even though the transfer was recommended as medically necessary for Maya, correct? Sustained. Okay. Well, let me ask you about the questions about medical foster you were aware that that was a DCF consideration being made, correct? I did not know about that. Okay. You were not aware that the question about whether a DC, whether medical foster was being made, you weren't made aware of that at the time? Mr. Anderson, you gotta let the question be asked. I understand. Okay. And then just only legal basis. Mr. Shapiro, what's your question? Okay. Did, did your lawyers ever discuss with you whether a DCF recommended medical foster was being contemplated? Objection calls for attorney-client privilege. Communications okay. sustained. I'll re-ask it, Your Honor. You were never made aware during the course of Maya's treatment that there was a DCF consideration for medical foster. Is that right? Not that I was aware of until just recently. The um, talking a little bit more about Kathy Beatty, you testified earlier to this jury that you were upset that the caregivers at All Children's were being cold to your daughter. Do you remember that? Yes. And in this situation, you heard Miss Betty by video testify that she was trying to provide comfort to your daughter when she found out that DCF was not going to release her on Christmas. Is that right? Say that again. You, you were here when Miss Betty testified by video. Yes. That the reason she was trying to comfort your daughter was because she found out that the court and DCF were not going to allow her to be released by Christmas. You heard that testimony, correct? That's what she said. Okay. She testified she was trying to provide comfort for your daughter after hearing that emotionally devastating news. True. She does not have the right to comfort a girl and kiss her on the cheek and stroke her hair. I'm sorry. You, you, were, you knew that Miss Betty also brought your child to the chapel to pray? Yes, I, was, I found out about that. Well, you, you certainly wanted your daughter to receive communion, true? Not by Kathy Beatty. Well, let me ask you about that. Is it fair to say that you never personally witnessed Miss Betty say anything inappropriate to Maya? No, I didn't. I'm, I'm correct. You never witnessed Miss Betty say anything inappropriate to Maya, correct? That's, I never witnessed, no. Okay. The, the supervision of the phone calls that you spoke about earlier, you agreed, do you not, that uh, your wife, Beata, was making statements about Maya's medical care that were not in Maya's best interest, true? Objection. Legal basis. Assumes facts not in evidence and assumes those facts. Overruled. Say that question again. Sure. 
During the period of time where your wife was calling Maya, she was calling and demanding medical treatments, and you yourself did not agree with your wife doing that, correct? Not all the time, and my wife had the right to question medical. We still had our parent rights. You, you actually told your wife to knock it off. That was after I was told to leave the hospital. Mr. Kowalski, my question to you, yes or no, you had told your wife to knock it off when she was calling the hospital. Let me finish where that was, because you're, you're taking it and putting it somewhere else. That was the day that I had to walk out of your hospital, and I was told my daughter is not under my custody anymore. I drove all the way home from St. Pete. I caught myself doing 15 miles an hour driving on I-75. I was so upset. And when I got home, my wife was on the phone talking to the nurse at the hospital. And that's why I told her to knock it off. So that's where that was. So don't put it somewhere else. But you also told your wife to stop calling the hospital and demanding treatment even after that point, true? That was during that time. Mr. That was that recording. With regard to the photographs, Mr. Kowalski, <clears throat> You did not find out about those photographs until after Beata passed away, true? That I didn't see the photographs, that's true. Okay. And Beata didn't see the photographs either before she passed no. away, did she? You were unaware of the photographs at the time Beata passed away, true? Say that question again, I'm sorry. You were unaware of the photographs before Beata passed away. I true. believe that's true. And that is the end of the cross-examination. Ooh, that got heated, didn't it? Let me bring back in my guests. Attorneys Jenny Brown and Rich Schoenstein on the program today both have a lot of civil experience. Uh, Jenny, your thoughts watching that just now? I think it's important to understand that parents don't always necessarily have to be on the same page and something wrong could have still happened. The mother has a medical background, right? And the father is living in this situation where he, he doesn't, but he was just told he doesn't have custody of her daughter. So I think it's something that that they can easily come back and explain, hey, this is the context of this comment. It's not sure. that crucial. Um, but I'm really anxious to hear from Maya. Oh, I know. Uh, it's. I think she is the most anticipated witness of this trial. And as she was sitting there, you know, uh, looking at her dad uh, testifying, it's hard to hear. You know, I saw her tearing up there as I was watching uh, the camera that was pointing toward her. Uh, I can see her in the studio. Uh, Rich Schoenstein, uh, what did you think of a dad getting visibly upset on that cross? I thought Jack Kowalski was a tremendous witness. I would take him as a witness any time. He was poised under very difficult circumstances and under attack. He was articulate. And at the end there, he really dressed down the lawyer for trying to take comments he may have made out of the context in which they were made and make it look like Jack Kowalski was saying something else. And I really thought he won that round. The one point the lawyer made in, in his column was there was a good question about, didn't you complain that the attending nurses were being too cold and now you're complaining that the social worker was being too warm mm -hmm. that was a good point but the rest of it i thought kowalski won i love how you picked up on that rich you're absolutely right it was like there was no pleasing them you know and when he said he didn't like you know the warmth of the the hug and the kiss on the cheek and saying that was inappropriate well Okay, which is it for you? You know, uh, really trying to confine him to a to a position. Uh, but yes, to your point, Rich, uh, Jack Kowalski uh, stood firm there, and that's tricky. You both know this. You know, when you do a cross examination of someone like that who's lost his wife, uh, he's been through a tragedy. Whether or not you know the party you're representing is liable is a whole nother situation, but handling the witness carefully in the questioning is, is quite another. Uh, we're gonna hit a break. Uh, ooh, when we come back, we're gonna see a quick redirect examination of Jack Kowalski, and then it's gonna be time for Maya to take the stand. Don't go away. 
Did you perceive in any way that they were a threat to the child? I perceived that they were distressed about their child. Did they seem as though they were acting appropriately for the circumstances? They were distressed parents, concerned for their child, and yes, that seemed appropriate. Did you see any signs or indications of Munchausen by proxy with this family when you went in? I saw distressed parents very concerned for their daughter. I did not see any indication of Munchausen by proxy. Oh, it's quite a battle that is heating up this morning in the Take Care of Maya civil case. Welcome back, my friends. Let's go back in the courtroom. We're about to see the redirect examination of Jack Kowalski. Kowalski, DCF never told you anything about any plans to transfer your daughter out of your care. No. Did you call the insurance company to confirm those codes? The ones that were on the Nemours form? Yes, I did. Was there a place on that form, although it's in evidence, to see the, where you had to sign it as a parent in order to effect the transfer? Uh, the transfer form, after I finally seen it, yes, there is a... And when you walked in, Ms. Beatty wouldn't talk to you much at all about what she was doing or anything, would she? No. It kind of went dark when you were there. Yes. And so, during this period of time when you had your daughter taken from you in this first week without any authority whatsoever, what was the stress level between you and your wife? What would you imagine? It was extremely high. And during this period of time, can you tell the jury whether you and Beata maintained by court order, the right to participate and direct Maya's health care? That is correct. If we could uh, bring up trial exhibit 2003-001, the All Children's Health System Summary of Patients Bill of Rights. And I'll focus you down uh, to Uh, the sixth one, a patient has a right to be given and by the health care provider. Right. Mm -hmm. And the next one, did the, the hospital guarantee you had the right to refuse treatments? That is correct. Anything further, Mr. Shapiro? Just two questions, Your Honor. If we could put back up that trial exhibit 2003-001. Well, just in the interest of time, Mr. Kowalski, you saw it said, a patient has the right to refuse any treatment except otherwise provided by law, correct? Yes. And you were aware, because you had your own attorney as well, there were multiple orders from DCF governing what treatment your daughter could get. True? Say that question again. You were aware, because you had lawyers appearing before you, before the DCF tribunal, that there were multiple orders governing patient care. True? Yeah, but we tried to leave there prior to all that legal. Well we'll, well, we'll we'll get back into that later, sir. But let me just ask you this about the transfer. Did you ever go to either All Children's or Nemours and say, I agree to the transfer, but I disagree with one of the codes? Did you ever do that? No. Thank you. Okay, members of the jury, do any of you have questions? Okay. <clears throat>
have the attorneys approach, please. I was just saying to my guest in the studio, trial attorney Jenny Brown, that it's helpful when you have a state like Florida where jurors are asking questions, you really get to know where your case is, where there might be a weakness. Uh, thoughts, Jenny? I love this. I feel like we've left on a cliffhanger, right? We're just waiting to see what this question is from the jury. But I think it's helpful because it lets you know where you need to go with your case. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Let's see what Jack. Uh, at that time, uh, before I seen him, yes, I was advised uh, around that, that rate shortly after that, yes. Um, anything further from the plaintiff? Uh, no, Your Honor, the witnesses, uh, may the witness not be excused, but nothing further. Okay, you may step down. Thank you, Your Honor.